It's well known that prime numbers on average get further apart the bigger they are. But have you ever thought about why this is? Let's make a plot which shows the number of primes less than or equal to x with increasing integers x. Of course, every time x is prime, the graph steps up by 1. So we can see from this that there are 4 prime numbers between 0 and 10. And if the primes didn't get further apart, the number of primes we encountered would increase linearly with x. However, we can see that in reality, this isn't true. The slope of this prime counting function seems to decrease as we go further to the right. In part, this is because the gaps between the primes, seen here as horizontal lines, tend to get larger. And it's not that every consecutive prime has a larger gap. More specifically, we mean this. For any integer n greater than 0, there exist two consecutive primes with a gap of at least n. And by consecutive primes, we mean there's no prime between them. So, for example, if you were to ask me for two consecutive primes with a gap of at least 1000, it would be possible to find an example. Here are two prime numbers which are consecutive and differ by more than a thousand. In practice, the larger the gap you want, the larger the primes will have to be. How do we prove this? Well, actually, we don't prove this directly. We prove something else which, in turn, implies this is true. And this is what we'll prove. For any n greater than 0, there exist at least n consecutive composite numbers. Notice, if we have a string of n composite numbers between two primes, then these primes will have a gap of at least n. When I first encountered this, it was as an exercise in a textbook, and I got given the clue, think factorial. If you want to have a go at proving this yourself, by all means, pause the video. So, just a reminder, n factorial is the product of all integers 1 to n. So, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2, which is 24. Now, think about adding numbers to factorials and see whether they're prime or not. 4 factorial plus 2 can be factored to give 2 times 4 times 3 plus 1. And so, this isn't prime because it's got the factor of 2. With 4 factorial plus 3, we get some number that has a factor of 3, and so isn't prime. And the same idea applies to 4 factorial plus 4. We can't go any further because there's no factor of 5 in 4 factorial. Now, you might have noticed that we skipped 4 factorial plus 1. Well, since any n factorial plus 1 can be factored into some integer times 1, the fact that there's a factor of 1 doesn't help determine whether this sum integer is prime or not, since any integer, prime or not prime, can be divided by 1. So here's where we are. n factorial is not prime. For n factorial plus 1, we don't know if it's prime or not. Then for n factorial plus 2, n factorial plus 3, and n factorial plus anything up to n, we can show are not prime by factoring out the number we've added. So look, we found a string of n minus 1 consecutive composite numbers. So we must be close to finishing this proof. Remember, we wanted n consecutive composite numbers. Well, this next step feels a bit of a trick, but it works. Instead of n factorial, think about n plus 1 factorial. We still can't determine whether n plus 1 factorial plus 1 is prime or not, but this time we have n plus 1 factorial plus 2 to n plus 1 factorial plus n plus 1, which can be shown to be not prime. So in total, we've now got a sequence of n consecutive composite numbers. Therefore, we've proved our theorem that for any n, there exist at least n consecutive composite numbers, specifically, n plus 1 factorial plus 2 to n plus 1 factorial plus n plus 1. Now, back to our original problem. For any integer n greater than 0, there exist two consecutive primes with a gap of at least n. Well, since we've proved that there exist at least n consecutive composite numbers, the primes on either side of these must be separated by at least n. And there's our proof. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.